Hi, this is Sarah from Sarahip.com with a special call with the one and the only Tiani Feidler from Tiani Talks. Now, Tiani, oh, goosebumps already. That was quick. I've been up for 12 hours tuning in and preparing and trying to sort my life to, to be ready for you. And I know everyone will feel it as soon as they listen to this chat. How would you describe your calling and your passion? Oh, goodness. Straight into it, hey? What a question. Um, we know you do astrology. We know you yeah. love it. I think I just am who I am, you know, and that just, uh, you know, everything that I do is just an extension of what I live and what I am. And mm -hmm. I'm, you know, me and my husband would talk about, you know, people finding a passion. But Joel yeah. sort of said to me, because I think Steve Jobs had a quote around like, find your passion and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And my husband said to me years ago, he's like, you do it right, because it's not about finding a passion. He goes, you yeah. live life with passion. Like mm -hmm. you just live yeah. life with passion. And he goes, so that feels more aligned. And that's something that people can achieve, because not everyone's going to just have this one thing. Yeah. And, you know, everything's in our chart, but not everyone's going to just have this one thing. But for mm -hmm. me, I've just been living like this, you know, pretty much since I was nine years old. It's just yeah. been my language. Yeah. It's just been the way I live. It's, you know, it's just everything that I am. So it's it's never been, oh, I found something that I did. Yeah. It's just, oh, this is who I am. And then it just becomes, you know, mm -hmm. that living truth, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's interesting you bring up Steve Jobs because the last thing I was reading was about Apple. Wow. Um, and Steve Steve Jobs, he was a 28101 and at 28 he invented the Apple Lisa, which was the precursor to the one that became super famous. And he was in a paternity suit. Also, um, Apple itself was started on a 28101 day. So I'm for sure he knew numerology. Anyway, wow. the story. He was a life past one. Life past ones very much are single pointed, single focus, can be quite one dimensional, really just don't change. What they love is what they love. And so of course you being a 33, me being an 11, slightly different way in. Mm. Interesting how he popped in though, because a lot but of that's people also called him up as like a, you know, aspirational character, but you know, not everyone can be like that. Yes. And that's interesting that you've even gone on that tangent with him, Sarah, because I do with one of the aspects that I'm going to talk about, which is really potent, that's happening next year that only yeah. happens around every 14 years. Steve Jobs was born with it in his No, because he came yes. in yesterday and I thought, oh, gosh. Isn't that funny? I, well, because they, the spirits come in, right? And they're like, what about me? I'm amazing. And then his mm. spirit came in and I thought, oh, dude, I don't even use your products anymore. <laughs> so, I don't. Okay, okay. I'll, ha I'll have a go because I think there's something there. There's something there. But how interesting that he's popped in straight away. So here's what we're going to cover if it's all right. We'll just sort of ask a couple of questions about you and then let's go into three main astrology themes for 2024. But because, you know, you are the most fascinating person. I mean, I read all your posts. I've booked into your classes. I've ordered your your book and your journal. And and you're, you seem like quite self-taught. Is that right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. so do you sort of just like read books or do you basically like watch videos or how, how do you kind of um, keep learning? I'm just curious. Um, yeah, I suppose definitely self-taught. I mean, obviously a 33, three really, you know, for me is that very mercurial as well. It's communication, right? And then the mouth, look, the mouth, the mouth. Always yeah. talking, yeah, talking it Always. out. I mean, my podcast is Tiani Talks, right? <laughs> it's about me talking. Um, I swear, you know, my aunties would pay me 50 cents to stop talking from the Gold Coast to Brisbane and literally I would stop talking. It was very difficult, but I got paid 50 cents and I'm a Taurus and I like money, so I did it. But the thing is for me, it, it always has been about communication and learning and stimulation because Mercury, my planet of communication, is also in his home sign of Gemini, which again, is fast, it's quick, uh -huh. it's lively. Uh -huh. So Gem a Mercury and Gemini native, we learn things extremely quickly. We can deal with quite a lot of data and information. But for me, I am, of course, mostly self-taught. Of course, I love, yeah. you know, again, I read, I, uh, you know, and I'm very tuned in. Like I've got Uranus trine my moon, which is extremely psychic in a way that I feel things. So sometimes whilst I might not, you know, be a very, um, you know, not, I wouldn't say not intellectual, but I sort of call some astrologers clinical astrologers. They're like, oh, there is exactly yeah. this degree and then mm -hmm. there is exactly this. I'm like, that can yeah, be yeah. cool, but I'm not mm -hmm. that astrologer. I'm like a maverick astrologer. I'm a little bit of a rebel astrologer, definitely self-taught, but of course done many courses and things over the years as yeah. well, fine-tuning skills, but it's been books. It's been, you mm -hmm. know, literally for me too, it's studying people. Like when I was nine, yeah. 
all I cared about was when are you born? When are you born? Wow. What's your astrology? What's your so astrology? So early. So, so started, early. Yeah. And I just sort of started studying people then. So yeah, I would yeah. study their characteristics and go, oh, that person feels like this. So mm-hmm. that is, again, it's it's very embodied for me. Like it's very felt. It's not just mm-hmm. it's not just through through my mind. And I think that that's you know, where people can get a little bit come undone, especially with astrology, because it's so yeah. layered, it's a multiverse mm-hmm. of things. And you can come undone because you're trying to intellectualize it. And yeah. look, for some people, it's going to be like that, you know, mm-hmm. take a Mercury Virgo, they're like, right, I've got systems, I've got, I've got all these things. But for other people, it's just not like that. So for me, it's just, it's come naturally for me to really focus on things that I'm excited about and that, you know, I don't want to read instructions. Like I don't like people go, oh, have you, and I'm, and I don't, anything that doesn't interest me, I don't even like look at, like, I just, I seriously don't. It's very single-minded, like single. Um, like can, I just, can I just see your hands again? I think I saw a lot of earth in there. You know, a lot of earth in your hands and very clear lines. Very, very and clear. also my, um, my little finger is really yeah. dry down my mercury. and so is mine so is mine yeah like so if, if my mercury line my, so my fingers all the, like my lines down here if it came up to here my little finger would be this long and so yeah. when I had my palm read mm-hmm. back in you know early 2000 oh no sorry when I was in my 20s I went yeah. to a rebirther mm-hmm. so he does rebirthing and I love rebirthing um and he did the ink with my hands and yeah. He's just like, wow, you always get what you want. Look at this communication finger. He's like, this is your Mercury finger. And he goes, if it was like where it should be with the lines, it would be very long. You talk all the time. And it was just all the things, right? Because our palm, as you know, holds all of that wisdom yeah. as well. So, um, yeah, that's that's no, th- that was just about, made, that, made, answered that question that really yeah no that really like gave us a wonderful context. Obviously, I I got, got into this whole field through palmistry. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I have an incredibly long Mercury as well, which is yeah. also the throat chakra, spiritual connection, languages, um, business even. But it's interesting because, yeah, the, the low set one, so this is the late bloomer, but yeah. also it's that they're very deep in their communication. Like it's very much in the subconscious field. It's not, it's very like connected to the insides. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so we think of this as the antenna. And the quirky finger. So it doesn't surprise me we have that in common. But also that's mm. actually the mark of the writer. Mm. And when I was tuning in for our little chat today and I thought, well, really, you know, you make a living writing. Mm. I mean, you're not just writing forecasts and blogs, but like writing as in R-I-G-H-T-I-N-G, writing people's views and perspectives. Mm. So that just sort of popped up. And a lot of 33s end up publishing, which I know you you have definitely done some of that. I think mm. there's more. Mm, so I interesting. Love that. I love that, Sarah. And it, it is interesting. We've both got very deep lines. Like my lines are very, very strong. Yours are deeper mm. than mine. Let's face mm. it. So I've got um more of like a water skin. So I've got like really soft skin yes. and not like you know the thousands of lines, like the witch's hands. Ah, uh, yes. And no, so I I've tend got... to um I tend to pick up a lot of information, but I can't always articulate. Obviously, you having slightly deeper lines means that you don't do come across as <clears throat> a bit more confident. Mm. Um, but, you know, this is really the main thing apart from that is actually the thumb. So really, mm-hmm. we should now look at your thumb. Does your thumb bend back? No, not you at all. Push it. Oh, that's something we have in common. That's not that common, except it's in not. my clients. But in my clients, it's really that, common. That thing that, that yeah. everyone has that real thing that goes. Correct. Like, so like, most people have a bendy, but it's so it's really interesting because I've I've been taking notes for like thousands and thousands of readings. <laughs> you definitely see it. I see it a lot in elders, female children, or where there's just been a really strong need to kind of look after yourself is the nicest way to put it, and then they oh, often go on to become quite like activists, quite forthright and obviously very stubborn and determined. But, of course, the challenge at times is just taking on too much. And this is, you know, this is where we just sort of can't can't really switch off, which is, of course, good for our clients but sometimes not so good for our nervous system and so really needing to sometimes just change environment, you know what I mean, to actually come to a complete stop which for a master number is near impossible anyway (laughs) anyway you you also have mercury in aquarius too so we both have those air mercuries so you've got a lot of stuff in aquarius 11 out of 13 things are air so i'm pretty much just like 
just kind of parachuted in for a little visit. You have, yeah, 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 absolutely. You're just flitting about on the on the ethers, darling, on the ethers. I love it. I feel like so I good. actually literally hover above people's heads and just do little kind of cosmic brain surgery and then flutter over to another person and do cosmic brain surgery. But my feet don't touch that. the ground much, which is, of course, why I have children and friends and a husband. <laughs> We're very grounded <laughs> and punctual people, punctual. <laughs> <laughs> so I managed to be late for my own interview, surprise. But um, so I wanted to just explain the Tiani effect before we jump in. And, you know, it was so interesting. So last night at about, you know, what, 9 o'clock, I was able to obviously put the kids to bed, start getting ready for this interview, and, oh, my God, I was overtaken by this frenetic desire to file everything I've done for the last year, get my email sorted, my bookings, my invoicing, and then only then did I feel prepared to talk to you. And we know, Tiani, one of your greatest strengths is you're bloody organised, aren't you? You've done your freaking forecast for the entire 2024 and you've already printed it and sold it. Mm-hmm, I have. That's yeah. not very common in our industry. Look, here she is and she's delicious. I bought one. One's it's on the way. <laughs> yes, it's divine. Well, I'm a time traveller, darling. You know, it's what I do. I time travel. And for me, it is, you know, important to be prepared. And And it's not about being in control. And I think that that's where people miss the nuances of actually being a shapeshifter and a time traveller and being able to be in the sweet spot. Not a lot of people can do that. And and so for me, that preparation is, and, and this is the hard thing sometimes because I'm in 2023, I'm still yeah. doing 2023 yeah. stuff. I've already lived 2024. Yeah. <laughs> Before I got on with you, I'm writing all the eclipses of 2025 and looking at the astrology for 2025. I'm already there. And I mean, as an astrologer, though, this is what we do. We look to mm. history. We look to the future. We're really seeing some of these incredible, you know, symbiotic layers that are going to come in because we're in a very, very interesting, dense, accelerated decade the 2020s are next level stuff I mean we're all going to speak about pre-2020 post-2020 but 2020 itself is quite epochal and it's not you you want to be prepared and yeah and that's why so yeah. many people are tapping out that's why so many people yeah. are struggling because for yeah. me astrology or information yeah. is power right like astrology mm-hmm. is a superpower if you understand what's going on does it change mm-hmm. It's just like going and, and having a look at the weather. For me, yes, I'm definitely organised and a prepared person. I'm not going to go and plan a picnic and then get caught in, in a thunder shower. Now, is that can that be fun? Absolutely. Do we want to live in the mystery? For sure. But I'm not going to Gianni, go Gianni, I have to, um, if it's okay, I just get take a breath. <sighs> Thank you so much. I just, if it's okay, I just want to add something. I just want to add something. Now, um, obviously, it's a bit homemade. But yes. in the last few weeks, I've been looking at the vibration of all the different modalities that people do. Yep. So numerology itself is a, is a 55, 10 one, which is a Fibonacci number. So beautiful. And, of course, one is first principles, like really why are you here, root chakra, who are your tribe. Astrology is a six energy, which, of course, is interesting because you're a six. Mm-hmm. Um, so what we see is astrology has the CEO formation, this and this. So those two lines are very significant. If you see them in someone's chart, they are always working at a CEO level or working with a CEO. Maybe not, maybe 5% are not, but almost always they're like, oh, I probably could have or I should have. And so I think it's really interesting when you hear that quote, millionaires don't use astrology, billionaires do. I have to admit I've personally not done a lot of astrology, but I feel like I'm moving in that direction, which is why, of course, I'm wanting to do more of your classes. But don't you think it's also interesting that it has the 666, which is that the goddess opening of the third eye, overcoming superstition. And so anyway, I just wanted to show you that because I thought you'd tickle your funny bone that it was a six energy. Of course, it does make sense, doesn't it? (laughs) I love it. I love and, it. Um, I know from my personal like chakra healing, six is actually my weakest chakra. Mm-hmm. And so it's interesting how I've left astrology until now. But here we are mm-hmm. on today's day. So this is our uh, first interview in a while. I'm super yes. excited. So what I'd really love to ask you, Tiani, beautiful goddess Tiani, um, is for 2024, we know it's a universal age year. Mm-hmm. Reconnecting with the big picture and your higher self, being the boss and the sovereign of your life. Mm. Um, running your race and not just sitting there watching and throwing popcorn and criticizing. Mm. Now, what and does we're going to release our little A yeah. talk soon too, right? Yeah, yeah, and we've yeah. done a talk with your co-host. We've done a very big one. Yeah, 
So what does the astrology say about 2024? Are there like three main themes and maybe even some timings or tips? Obviously, I'm going to put your links below, but I'm just so curious to know at this point what you are really feeling. Mm. So, I mean, again, if you've seen my 2023 kit, it had a big skull on it, okay? It had a big skull on it. I have that 2024 has the Fibonacci. Like this is the perfect Fibonacci. And it is, you know... There is, and again, I will always say that, you know, I don't think that there's anything, that there's any such thing as a bad year. I, I mean, we yeah. make our own year. A year doesn't make us. And mm-hmm. so for me, it's not good or bad. It just is what it is. Yeah. And for an eight, we are totally in that the seeds you have sown is what you will harvest. The, the, the eight year is very much a year of harvest. But what we're seeing astrologically is there's many different things going on, but it's very different to this year. So we knew 2023, collective seven, you know, very, uh, you know, it's been quite difficult for a lot of people, especially because I talk about the seven as the Mack truck year. Are you in alignment? Yes. Are you in a lie? Yes. Exactly. Have you done the actual work? Because the eight year comes and you reap the benefits of the work. Yeah. So, but this year we've seen, in 2023, we've seen huge changes. Saturn moving into Pisces for the first time in 30 years. Mm. Pluto hitting Aquarius for the first time in 250 years. Yeah. So of course, Jupiter changes signs every year because he mm. moves through a sign every year. So it's normal for him to change signs. Um the nodes shifted and so the nodes are what gives us our eclipses so for yeah. next year the the energy you know there's some really amazing aspects and alignments that are yeah. happening so one of the ones was the Steve Jobs one so this one actually happens in April so let me give you the date of that okay um, here's my million um pages I've got so the 21st of April 20 um which is you know um a 21 degree aspect so we've got the 21st of april it's a 21 degree aspect i just love that because of course numerology nerd yeah um and this is jupiter the planet of expansion and abundance and wisdom and teaching and philosophy hitting uranus now Mm -hmm. steve jobs was born with this as was annie lennox bob dylan michael schumacher Mm -hmm. they were born with these with this jupiter uranus conjunction now jupiter is a social planet um, it's still within our vision. So ultimately mm-hmm. we can see Jupiter in the sky, which if yeah, you just yeah. looked out over the last couple of nights, it is the 27th of November, 2023. Mm-hmm. But the last couple of nights we've been able to see Jupiter with the moon. Um, so we can see Jupiter, whereas Uranus, we can't see him with our mm-hmm. visible eye. So Jupiter and Uranus come together around every 14-ish years. Yeah, yeah. And so this is quite a huge acceleration in mm-hmm. Uh, like it's two gods sort of coming together. We're, we're talking wow. of Uranus, the sky god of Uranus, lightning flash, mm-hmm. inspiration. I mean, he's mm-hmm. everything to do with Aquarius. You know, Aquarius mm-hmm. is ruled by Uranus, right? Mm-hmm. So it's all this genius, eccentric innovation. So every time we've had a Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, we get someone like Steve Jobs who invents something, who is very inventive, or we have something really wild happen like, um, you know, world wars, the internet or Google being registered as a domain name. We have really interesting things happen. So yeah, just look yeah. out for this day. Like this is ultimately, it, it actually peaks on the 21st of April and I'm talking mm-hmm. um, in Brisbane time. Mm-hmm. Um, but actually it's active, I would say, pretty much all of April and into early May. Mm-hmm. So yeah. again, we're looking at like huge AI stuff. We're looking at, yeah. this is a real cosmic codes, you know, urine who is the sky god jupiter who is zeus who expands things and so this is a very exciting aspect that we get to experience next year so for everyone personally this is happening at 21 degrees of taurus Mm -hmm. so you know if anyone knows their chart they can go to their chart find the taurus house and locate where this will be happening yep yep and that will give you you know the theme around where something may peak or a genius Mm -hmm. new idea will come in or something revolutionary may happen for you some of the keywords I've written here are like new discoveries unexpected opportunities intuitive hits uh, finding meaning this Mm -hmm. is a time of surprise solutions and outmoded ways being released of course this is new goals new aspirations around faith in the future and grand visions. You know, this is also around truth and what is truth, exposure, the growth of consciousness. So this is a very exciting aspect. So, you know, all astrologers are sort of, you know, talking about this. I've written about it in my kit, of course. At this same time, Pluto will have hit 
two degrees of Aquarius for the first time in 250 years. Mm. So the fact that we're having this quite accelerated opportunity of expansion yeah. and wisdom and growth with Pluto, which is very AI future mm. um, in Aquarius, it's like, there's going to be some really interesting things happen. Now, yes, I'm giving you a date, but a, but an aspect doesn't happen on a date and then it ends. Yeah. You know, there's an application to that. There's a ripple effect. I mean, it could take six months for something mm-hmm. that sort of starts to brew for you yeah. in April to actually come into full effect. It could be two years. Who knows? But the thing is, is that there's something really being seeded here. So mm-hmm. pay attention very, uh, you know, early. The er, I'm I'm talking some early stuff this year. Like, yeah. um, you know, early in the year, the energy is very different to later in the year. Yeah, you know, I feel with 2024. But for me, 2024 also feels like an exhale. Like, fucking yeah. get your shit together because 2025 comes along. We're in a collective nine mm-hmm. year. We've got some huge astrological things happening mm-hmm. again. Stuff that we haven't seen in hundreds of years again yeah, we're, yeah. we're moving into that next portal mm-hmm. again so for me it's like the eight is a reprieve does that mean your life will be amazing I can't promise you that like whatever seeds you have sown is what you will reap darling well like, you know um, like words like karma god faith hope this is all a energy commitment it's it's all like it is what what go what is it what goes around comes around as mm-hmm. you give so you receive as above exactly. so below it's interesting to watch people get nervous I think some people still very much believe in like a really destructive, punishing God force. Mm-hmm. I feel like that would be one of the biggest healings that people could like explore in the next year is actually to draw God and write about God on a piece of paper and just notice, I mean, is it still like this kind of maniacal Santa Claus figure? Because that that is capping a lot of the, you know, potential, a potential, especially if you feel like God hasn't got that strong feminine aspect at all. Mm. so super interesting how you're talking about this now Mm. april does feel big i mean we've got easter of course which is rebirth in general but also it's a three month and if you actually look at eight it's two threes that have come together to cooperate and so eight and three have a very strong impact on each other obviously eight plus three is also 11 which is the portal Mm. so yeah i've also really felt that as well i've been following the whole ai chat gbt journal uh, journey because a lot of people ask me about it in my classes and i just did a whole call on it yesterday actually about oracle cards and stuff with a 33 sarah um And it's interesting because I think also the creators of that are using numerology or astrology, just the way that it's all panned out, started to really come forwards in the universal one year of 2017. Then they launched it in March. Chat GBT came out in March, and which was a universal one month in a seven year. Seven is the lightning flash, a lot of technological innovation. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure if you've been following, but there has been a lot of turmoil in that sector. They've been firing and hiring, and there's a lot of ethics. And it's interesting because eight is all about like social justice and um, no, like not defrauding people. And so there's just, I feel like there's, if you think about it, it's like a really big pair of goggles or binoculars. And I feel like people are really scrutinizing what's going on in that industry because. Well, we all have a computer now, and we can all actually um, do our own research. Mm, that's right. This is all, it's all very interesting. So, yeah. okay, so yeah. April is huge because of the yes. Jupiter Uranus connection and also Pluto and Aquarius. That's really interesting. And so what else What else is really like standing up for you, Tiani? Um, so another just big general, um, you know, chat that I want to talk about like another just a big mm-hmm. thing that happens is Jupiter changing signs that's always a big deal Jupiter is our Zeus Jupiter is our actual Santa Claus of the zodiac. oh really that's so interesting he is um and because he is abundant and, and he is yeah, the yeah. biggest planet the in big our planet right the one who throws yeah. his weight around his or her yep. weight around. yeah yep, exactly he is Sagittarius you know that's <laughs> the that is who he rules so this ingress happens Jupiter moves into Gemini for the first time in 12 years this uh-huh. happens on the 26th of May and he will stay in Gemini all the way through until the 10th of June 2025 so you yeah. want to again like for you personally you're going to go uh-huh. to your chart you're going to look at that Gemini house uh-huh. now Jupiter in Gemini are things like you know, this is a very yang energy. Gemini is a mutable um, air. And so what I've written down in some of my other notes is there's some big head stuff going on next year. So we've got the soul star chakra being activated because mm-hmm. it's an eight year. Yeah. I've channeled the liquid crystal of amethyst, which is also around the soul star and um, stellar gateway chakras. Yeah, the yeah. dragon year, the year of the dragon actually because yeah. of a 
because of a, a wood element, there is mental health, head, brain, memory, and higher perspective stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Plus, 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 Jupiter's in Gemini. Gemini rules the mind. Yeah. Plus, 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 we also have another aspect of Chiron on the North Node happening, which only happens very rarely in Aries. Yeah. yeah. The sign, the sign that is fire, but it's also it rules the head. Oh, and so when's, when's the Chiron North Node Aries thing happening? The Chiron North Node is March. So, oh, so we've really got March, April, March. May. It's all just happening, yes. which makes sense because in numerology and Chinese astrology, I'm having such a funny day. Astrology, you know, the year only really starts February-ish. So, okay, so then we just go bang in. Look, that makes sense because in numerology, eight is every, what is it? It's nothing, nothing, everything. Mm. nothing nothing everything and so it doesn't surprise me that the year is going to start with just an enormous almost explosive growth energy well, we start the year itself. Yeah. in january with a you know a mercury retrograde so the year and it's a nine month january so mm. again we're sort of it's still like oh what's yeah. ending something yeah, yeah. Occurred, something feeling that mm. and then february will come we'll have the chinese solar year yeah. and chinese lunar year and then march we have um the astrological new year which is the way I work yeah. and then ultimately we also have a total solar eclipse happening in April as well also mm -hmm. in Aries the sign mm -hmm. of the head so again there's so oh, much cerebral stuff going on and yeah. absolutely February uh, April February April or February March and April and May those first few months they're very yeah they are they're very interesting um, it's interesting but, Tiani because when you say it's about the head and I keep hearing it's about getting ahead a h e a d mm -hmm. people are trying yeah. to get ahead in those mm -hmm. months but it's got that double meaning isn't it because absolutely um, and we talked about even protecting headspace before we got on today's call um, obviously we are being pummeled with like really emotionally draining and, and tragic stuff at the moment exactly. it's almost impossible to go anywhere without just people weeping Mm -hmm. um and, and so the collective it's grief is, yeah. is the collective grief is palpable and mm -hmm. november of 2023 has been big again because it's a nine new moon. Yeah. so we're really purging the, mm -hmm. the, the we're, we're actually speaking on the full moon in gemini which is probably yeah. why you're going what's happening today it's a it's a very confusing day um, <laughs> with, with mercury square <laughs> neptune and all the things going on but, but yeah, the, the Jupiter and Gemini transit is really interesting because we're looking at this mutable air. Jupiter doesn't like to be in Gemini. So we've got to remember oh. that planets like to be in signs. So they're at home, they're in their domicile, they're exile, um, they're exalted in certain signs. Oh. But, then they're, but then they're exiled in certain signs. Oh, and they're, wow. They're detriment, you know. And so Jupiter in Gemini is in detriment. He's not oh. as happy there because there's way too much going on. <laughs> so this is why this whole mental health stuff we're going to have to really hone in. And when I started looking at all the things that have to do with the head, with the airy yeah. stuff, the dragon, the amethyst, the soul star chakra, all of it, I was just like, whoa, that's a lot. That is a yeah. lot. So, you know, Jupiter expands and makes everything bigger. So you think he's putting on the suit of Gemini for a okay. year and Gemini okay. is cerebral and curious and hello, look at me. I've got Mercury and Gemini. We talk a lot. There's a lot going on, you know, highly stimulated, so, you know, questioning everything, decoding, it's a yang energy, a very yang energy. It can be very gossipy, very chatty, very it over seems like It seems a little bit like the whiz kid takes over the computer, you know. It's like the whiz kids take over or something. And I know that, you know, the children who came through recently, you know, since COVID, they're very, very special and they are turning three or four now and they mm. are incredibly chatty and they're forcing their parents to become more spiritually aware and more ethical and conscious. Mm. Yeah. My, my little boy, he's, he's only two and he goes around telling people, don't yell, be kind. When they, you know, when they talk about yelling at their kids, and he's he's only this like this big, mm -hmm. and I think there's something there as well with the children, mm -hmm. um, being very available, like they are, and they're also just very impressionable, and their parents probably having to really notice what energy they're bringing home or into their lives. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this Jupiter in in Gemini. So it was interesting. What did you say about the? um nothing 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 everything right oh that's know? just um you know me I just make up those things <laughs> um, oh, I love that well so I work with a lot of eights my mum's an eight I have an eight challenge and so I've made a point to study eights my whole life like how do they get what they want because mm -hmm. really they don't get shortcuts and they don't get free tickets or silver spoons they just they mm -hmm. just it's grit it's just grit 
Mm -hmm. um and so I noticed that it's very much like a giant boulder energy it's Mm -hmm. just nothing nothing and then get out of the way because they won't be you know what I mean they're they're going for the next 25 years so once they get going oh yeah that, that is actually from my class um so this is a quote I always use um you can't win with an eight in front of you and you can't lose with an eight behind you Mm. eights have the power to play god Mm. and they have all the connections and they've got all the knowledge and so in an eight year we associate this with vips we associate it with higher self we associate it um, with people who actually know what they're doing the professionals eights are the professionals and so I feel like this is a year where a lot of people uh, will be looking for the true professionals or actually to become that in their own occupation. And that's not just another certificate, but actually like mastery. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just loved that saying because Jupiter and Gemini, when I um, recorded my 2024 panel and I had my my astrologer on for talking about Jupiter and yeah. Gemini, it's going to be everything, everywhere, all at once. Oh, because gosh. <laughs> hive mentality she said it was a really great sort of conversational point that we got on because Gemini as you can see with me too it's just it it, you know it's it's very curious it's very open it's it's a mutable malleable mind to have a lot of information and Mm. so so Jupiter in Gemini this whole time is it's very wordy it's high speed it's it's writing it's communication um but it's also restlessness and that's the biggest thing here is like this thirst to learn but then the burnout the mental burnout oh that is so interesting Chiani Mm. because I've been uh, I've done one of the calls for my forecast series on 11 11 and I talked about because eight has this harmonious relationship with four so in our universal four year of 2020 which was about the heart the lungs the home and really coming into your center obviously we had the lockdowns and so I was saying that this is the year where people will start to recover or integrate what they learned there and it's it's interesting because a lot of people during that year we know the meditation rates went up about 30 percent and so here it's where they may actually change their jobs to become I don't know meditation teachers or actually like yeah just change their whole lifestyles because they realize it's not just a one-hit wonder you need to you know be looking doing self-care for your whole life especially Mm -hmm. if you've had a, a difficult start so okay so what we've talked yeah. about so far is it's really just a big bang that first quarter yes wow and so need to make the most of the you know the, the next few months to really just prep ourselves I've really been feeling that need to just go within um and not yeah not um peak too early next mm-hmm. year I feel like there's some really important things changing on the planet I think the biggest one, as I mentioned, is just families coming back together and the children really not um, taking no for an answer and not wanting to just be put in front of an iPad, actually wanting to be out there, whether it's protesting or having an opinion or, you know, ch- not changing the world. So was there any... I think, that I think the shadow of Jupiter and Gemini is all of those things that can be those things, though, like, mm-hmm. you know, we're looking at Pluto in um, Aquarius, you know, getting yeah. to two degrees for the very first time in mm. 248 years. We've never experienced this terrain before in our lives. Wow. Unless you are 248, which no one here is. Yeah. Um, so we've got that and because we are moving into the era of air. So this is a lot of misinformation. Pluto and Aries is oh. and, and it's already happening. I mean, we see that everywhere. Misinformation, the AI, AI even AI stuff, images. And, yeah. Well, all mm-hmm. of it. I mean, I listen to a lot of podcasts and I am certainly not someone who would do a chat GP or fake something like I could never be fake. I don't know how people would use something like that to promote a business. It's just not who I am. Um, And I will never go down that path. I would never use uh, like I've been listening to some pretty epic um, podcasts around the damage and ultimately what we see on screens, not in 10 years, but within three years, yeah, nearly none of it will be real. And so this is where this is a really full on thing because we're moving to this era of air. So we're thinking Mm. airborne diseases, Mm. um, AI, you know, Mm. misinformation, miscommunication, Mm. like all those things that we're already Mm. starting get edged on Jupiter mm-hmm. moved into Gemini for a year I mean look out like that's pretty yeah huge. Uranus is about to move into Gemini in a few years and this hasn't happened for 80 years so I mean I'll be talking about that in a couple of years and writing that oh, in my sure, sure. but we've had a lot of Gemini energy with we've had the eclipses in Gemini mm-hmm. not so long mm-hmm. ago we've mm-hmm. had um, a Mars retrograde in Gemini mm-hmm. which meant Mars stayed in the sign of Gemini mm-hmm. for six months instead of six yeah. weeks when was that 
Oh, I don't have the dates on me. So no, 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 no. It's okay. So if I, I think could it, sort of put that into like a um, year. I think it finished this year or last year. I, yeah, sorry, oh, I've got like okay. a no, no, no. I, I, and I so appreciate you're so deep, Tiani. Oh, hang on, I do have it. The thirtieth oh, of. I've got it right. Literally, I'm, I'm on you the are funny. You're such, such a crack. Okay, so I'm going to talk about this Gemini house so that everyone can know. Gemini okay, house. let's do that. This is the slip streaming into a new consciousness of what mm -hmm. I, is what I've called it. So everyone can yeah. look at their Gemini house. Mm -hmm. The North Node was in Gemini, which was destiny and mm -hmm. Dharma from mid-2020 to late 2021. Now, this just briefly was uh, pretty much lockdown, right? This was, you do not need to travel. Hello, Sagittarius. Hello, airports being closed. Hello, mm -hmm. the entire world being closed, which was the South Node in Sag. The yeah. North Gemini was saying, walk your local streets. That's where enlightenment Oh, my is. God. Goosebumps right everywhere. Yes, then Mars went retrograde in that same house from the 30th of October 2022 and finished mm -hmm. up the 13th of January 2023 this year. So again, mm -hmm. spending a lot of time pushing energy into that. Then Jupiter moves into Gemini, of course. Um, and then Ju um, Mars and Jupiter will actually have a conjunction, which hasn't happened since 1989 next year. And then Uranus, planet of innovation, you know, all of the things I spoke about, Uranus, yeah. actually moves into um, Gemini a bit back and forth, 2025, but fully in 2026. So that Gemini house is the slip streaming into the new consciousness. Mm -hmm. And again, we're moving into the era of air. Pluto yeah. will stay in Aquarius for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Uranus will stay in Gemini for seven years. Yeah. And it's it's a huge time when it comes to all of this yeah. air stuff, right? Like, yeah. Mm. So when, when you're talking, I suppose I'm, I'm not entirely familiar with the words. I'm sure a lot of my viewers will be, which is great. I, I kind of get more images. Mm -hmm. so I guess what I got, because, you know, my background is environmental science and climate mm -hmm. change and all those things. So obviously, you know, the territory is disappearing that we were born into, that we know. And it's almost like so we're going from sort of land creatures to, to flying, to winged creatures. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's almost as if we, we will just simply have to um, go up and some of some people have prepared their wings and some people are going to be sticking them on with blue tack at the last minute because <laughs> you know that's something how we live some of us live but it's it's almost like it will be a necessity that we go in this different direction as as just humans mm -hmm. and so I guess I would hope maybe the crux of today is that um you know we have all chosen to be on earth at this particular time knowing at some deep core level that things would be um, getting intense around this period and just I suppose to trust that we already have all of the things that we need and it's really just about expressing them yeah. which of course you know the Gemini you've, it's yeah. like you've got it but it's just like bringing it out does that make sense yeah it does it's a great great visual love it because I feel like a lot of the times people try to install stuff in themselves like I really have to learn this and I'm thinking mm. you know life is so short My, I think a lot of things we are already born with Oh, like I, I know when I picked up numerology and I thought, oh, my God, how did I learn it in like one night by reading a book? I must be a genius. And then I really had to obviously play with it. And I went, no, I've done this before. <laughs> I mean, it's so yeah. obvious I've done it before. But at the time, it was the only way I could explain it. And yeah. so that recovery of the past life gifts or the lineage gifts or spiritual gifts, I think, will also be a beautiful thing. So in terms of sort of making the most of the year and actually enjoying it, what would be your biggest tips for people if they're feeling a little bit like nervous, or anxious? Well, I suppose, you know, being prepared. That's the first thing I would say is know your chart, know yourself, know the secrets yeah. of the universe. Like for me, <sighs> astrology. I love how that just rolls place. off your tongue. Like it's kind of like just know what you're going to buy tomorrow. It's like people are like, yeah. well, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, you know, it's just like if you're not participating relentlessly in life, you're allowing you're allowing life to happen to you, not through you. Yeah, and create, I think that creator or reactor. Creator yeah, or are reactor. you creating or are you reacting? Especially yeah, yeah, to yeah. these years, you know, and you, you really are doing, you know, one of two things. Is it love or fear? You know, and, and if you live from fear, that is a difficult path. It's a very mm -hmm. difficult path. But when you know yourself and you are sovereign to who you are and autonomous and you pull on your own inner resources, you use nature. That's why I don't see yeah. other people. I go to a tree, you yeah. know, nothing is tainted when we are in nature. Yeah. And 
but if you've got so many layers and loud white noise telling you who you should be, what you should do, what direction, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I'm going to tell you now, that's going to be on steroids when Jupiter moves into Gemini. Like that is like a fucking megaphone just screaming. So if you're not stable, Mm. the instability may get worse and and Mm. that's the thing so it's about being prepared it's about understanding maybe where these planets are going to aspect your own chart because all you have to go oh that's my relationship house oh that's my house of career so all of a sudden you go ah this is where these things will happen and then straight away you can breathe a sigh of relief it's like okay so just like I said earlier like it's not like you look outside and you go it is going to start you know, thunderstorm, yeah. let's all go for a picnic. You go, no, I, I need to do something, so I'll take an umbrella. Like we're not stopping what's happening yeah. from happening and the planets are never doing anything to you. They're revealing the truth. That's just how it That's just how it is. There's no more rugs yeah. to push your shit under. If you're still pushing your shit under rugs, unfortunately, your years are going to get much more difficult yeah. because the years are going to get much more difficult, especially in the 2020s. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I think, you know, again, I just get that picture. It's sort of like, you know, help is coming and so you need to sort of set a place at the table. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it just, and that needs to be like expect, expect guests. I, think oh, but I, I, I love that because I'm someone who says invite fear to the table, put a placemat out and that's your fear. Yeah. So you're saying expect help. And I'm like, but guess what? That's you looking at yourself. You mm. are your help. You are your savior. Mm. No one is coming to save you. This is you. This is you and your life. So yeah. I love that analogy that set the table for the help, but then take yourself out of that and sit yeah. there. Allow yourself to speak with your soul instead of inviting 58 other people to the table telling you who you should be and what you should do. Enough with the searching outside of yourself for these answers. Yeah. Like, seriously. And that's what I think Jupiter and Gemini will do. Like this is going to be an extremely busy time and I feel very blessed because I'm in a personal four year next year so I'm like yeah. see you later because a personal yeah. four year for me I really go in a lot yeah. of behind, uh-huh. the, behind the scenes sort of work mm-hmm. for me I really step back in a personal four year so I sort of feel lucky I'm going to just go back and create and do all of my witchy magic and my sorcery and all the things behind the scenes but you know if you're in like a personal three year next well, year I'm, I'm, in, five, I'm in a personal yeah. nine year next year and um also okay. in my yeah. In my numerology chart, my whole life currently changes at 43, which is in two months. So, like, literally two months from today. So, I'm like, Woo! better, better. That's why I'm doing my forecast so early this year. It's also to help myself. So, let's let's put yeah, this all it. together in one little yummy summary. So, basically, you've been living this life for a long time, and in your experience. It's going to be a really big start to 2024 and the key word is preparation and it's important to um, embrace the fact that there will be big emotions and it's okay to express them and it's important to express them. Um, we know that eights, are, that's that's obsession actually in numerology. They are obsessive and you can see that it's the closed number apart from zero, eight is the most closed. So I, I do find these people, that they, they are not open to other ideas. Then you might have about five minutes where you've got to kind of get in there. <laughs> and so this could be a year where um, it's important that at some levels you do just hunker down a bit Mm. and just digest what you've already taken in in the last eight years and bring that to fruition in 2025 rather than constantly starting new projects um and what I also heard from you is um you know really to uh what would you call it invest in our own technology our own connections not just external ones it's interesting because um I find a lot of healers they're naturally internally very connected, but it's like you can get sucked into this thing where you think that you have to be successful. And I feel like that's one of the most dangerous words, isn't it? To be a successful healer or a successful psychic. And, and it's almost always successful as something you have to pay a lot of money for, which we've, you know, we've talked about that. You talk about that a lot or something that you really have to change yourself for. You're like lose 55 kilos. And I feel like as soon as you step off that, you just, it's like you just step off the cliff. Love that. that idea of having to chase being successful as opposed to just being self-expressed or whatever other yummy word that we would use. So what's your word for 2024? What's a word that you'll be meditating on or wanting to explore in 2024, Tiani? 
I am going to be sitting with all of my stuff that will come through. I'm very full at the moment, this full moon in Gemini. But I want to, I, I really love how you've sort of ended and wrapped, it, wrapped this up too, because I've written here to stay curious and you use the word digest. And what I've also written here is the art of restraint. Mental self-discipline is required. Yeah. And ask yourself at every movement, do you need more? That's the mm -hmm. biggest thing. And that's what you were talking about. The, the, yeah. You know, this is around digesting what you already have, yeah. which actually... Jupiter is in Taurus until May, and that mm. is around digesting. So Amazing. we've still got we've still got Jupiter in Taurus for, for five months of the year before yeah. Jupiter moves into Gemini. So again, anchor in Earth, digest. Ha can you practice restraint? Yes, you know, I think that that's a really big thing with all of this Gemini energy. Is that do you really need another course, another certificate, another this, another? You're not actually integrating any of the work that you've done. You're just trying to get more money for teaching other yeah. random bullshit. Like yeah, go go back is. go back over what you've invested in. Well, exactly. if we, if we wind up with some some eight energy words. So mm. here's some eight energy phrases. So less is more. That's mm. to forty four eight, which is the vibration of happiness. Less is more is is my motto for 2024. It kind of rhymes, mm. doesn't it? I love it. Um, you know, happiness and medicine add to forty four eight. I think they talk about happiness being the best medicine. Um, mm. Commitment, eternity. What else? Forty four. Um, look. 44 energy is really when two people have open hearts and they're willing to truly help each other to evolve. It's a really good year for powerful partnerships. Obviously, mm -hmm. this is hopefully, you know, an example of one. And where people really just come to the table, they bring something and there's not really any expectations. I feel like that's the way of living that will serve us well in terms of our mental health and in terms of, you know, staying in business even because a lot of people are already struggling. We know that. So, yeah, I wanted to just wind this up with this idea. Yeah, less is more going mm -hmm. forwards. And, you know, really go deep into what you have already taken into your life and the people you have invested in and stick with it rather than, um, you know, jumping around like a, a cricket on red cordial. Mm. Um, because although that is the temptation, that is also a type of self-sabotage. Mm. Um, so go the distance in 2024 and be sure to check out Tiani. She is, as you can see, extremely passionate and the Tiani effect is you will get your life sorted just by just by being around her, right? Um, thank you, Tiani, for being here on the planet yeah. for this very interesting chat, which totally had its own direction. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm really looking forward to more collaborations, and hopefully one day we'll we'll stand together on some kind of stage with cake and and tea, because yes. that that's always I think the very best way to to change the world. Mm, so thank you so much for your generous okay. time and advice and um so how can people follow you or find you my absolute pleasure sarah you know i love talking with you i love sharing all of the yummy magic with you um of course you know just i've got my podcast tiani talks astrology everywhere yeah. you find podcasts i do one every week and just instagram you know that's where i'm at okay well thank you so much. All the things. and you have a long waiting list don't you June at this point and yeah <laughs> I love the way you say yeah, that yeah, with a little July. sign and eye roll <laughs> well it's just because it's I need four of me um and Jupiter and Gemini I don't know how that's going to fucking help me but it's all my ninth house I'll probably want to hibernate and write a book or something I'll be writing my 2025 kit so um yeah Yes. It's it's always amazing to work with someone like you, Tiani. You're an amazing and true true professional, and um, you definitely make me want to learn more astrology. So oh. thank you so much. We'll catch up again yeah. soon, okay? We will, darling. Thank you. Okay, thanks much. always. Okay, bye.